What is up fellow nerds and welcome back to the Dapper Snapper Gaming Channel and welcome back to How Do I Want to Do This? This is our series where we take a look at all playable options available to players in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition and then we rank them on a scale of 1 to 10 and then build them or fix them together. Now today is part 2 of our talk on the Eloquence Bard and so I hope you guys are excited to watch us build one of these together. I'm excited, I really like this build, I really like this subclass and so I think you all are going to have fun as well. So go ahead and leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already as you can see most of the people who watch this channel are actually not subscribed and we are trying to get to 500 by the end of the year so I think it's possible if you will help me out and of course you can do that by sharing this video with your friends and clicking the bell so that you're notified when new videos are uploaded so that you don't miss any of those so before we get into the build, I do want to say that this video is coming a little bit late. Um, it was supposed to come out earlier this week, but I had to delay it. Um, this build that you're seeing today is version like 3.0. Um, version 2.0 was fully recorded and like halfway edited. And I just realized that there were some things that about the build that I, I didn't think were up to par, um, at least the standards that I try to have for the channel. Um, and so I decided to scrap the entire thing, uh, change the build a little bit, and, and we're just re-recording the whole thing. So that's why it's a little late. That's why we're now doing this after Thanksgiving. Um, so happy Thanksgiving. I hope you guys had a wonderful day. Um, if you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, then I hope you had a great Thursday and I hope you're having a great Friday slash Black Friday if you're if you're out and doing all the shopping and that sort of thing. So I hope you guys are having a great time. I'm sorry that it is a little late, but we will be, we will be back to our normal schedule coming next week. So just wanted to get that out of the way before we jump in. Now, as we talked about last week, um, we talked about this being similar to Jareth from the uh, the Labyrinth movie, uh, David Bowie's character, which I think is really, really funny. I, I think it's a really fun comparison, um, and this definitely fits the entire flavor. The character we're building today is not necessarily built around it being him. Um, it's it's definitely taking some liberties in the Dungeons & Dragons world, but uh, there's, there's some flavor in there for sure, so hope you guys are excited as we jump right in. So let's get right into things, and starting off with our race. Uh, for this build, originally I went with something very unique, but instead we're going to switch to doing something very vanilla. Um, we're going to go with custom lineage, and this gives us the option to take a feat at level 1, um, and I think that that's going to be really, really nice for this build. I really only need the one feat, and I don't want to have to waste time doing this later when I have other ability score increases and so I want as many ability score increases on this character as I possibly can get so we're gonna go ahead and take custom lineage that gives us a plus two to any stat of our choice and any feat that we want um, so the feat we're gonna take actually is going to be a new one from Fizzband's Treasury of Dragons which just came out here very recently and we're going to take gift of the gem dragon this is a really cool feat um, the gem dragons have some uh, uh, some telekinetic psychic powers and so we're getting a little bit of a taste of that it is a half feat so we do get a plus one to one of our mental stats with this and then we also get the ability to just hit back when we are hit by a creature that is within 10 feet of us we have the ability to force a strength saving throw and then we can uh, we can shove them do some force damage it's pretty cool um, I, I also consider the telekinetic feet here um, they're very similar um, however telekinetic is a bonus action um, where this is a reaction so telekinetic is a little bit more uh, versatile in which you can just move people whether or not they uh, whether or not they want to be moved um, they can intentionally fail the save on telekinetic but it is a bonus action and so a lot of the times we're going to be using bonus action to give out bardic inspiration or even uh, give our negative modifiers to an opponent and so I don't want our feet to compete with that so that's why I went with this one however telekinetic is a great option as well so just something to consider as far as our stats go we're gonna go very standard here sort of um, we're gonna go with a 17 in our charisma 15 constitution 13 dexterity 12 wisdom 10 intelligence and of course dumping strength so we get our plus two from our custom lineage and plus one from our feet so we're gonna start off with a 20 charisma which is 
absolutely amazing. Um, this is our modified standard array that we use in all of our builds. So uh, this is just what we use at my table. Of course, if your table uses point by regular standard array, uh, rolled stats, whatever it is, make sure to use that at your table. This is just with my method that I use at mine. As far as equipment goes, just some standard stuff. Um, I would take some studded leather armor for now. Um, I would take a rapier or some other weapon with finesse, possibly even a ranged option. Um, but this this is basically to try to keep people away from you. Um, you are not going to be the frontline fighter. Um, your, your AC is not going to be all that great, at least for now. We're going to make it better as we get a little bit higher level um, but for right now your AC is not going to be all that impressive so you're going to want to try to stay in the back and encourage people where you can and um, help to uh, lessen the blows and lessen their attack rolls with uh, with your bardic inspiration as well so we have a lot of a lot of really cool ways to do this so as far as our level one class goes um, last week I started on a class that wasn't what we we're talking about and I broke that rule for for this series anyway uh, this week we're breaking two of our rules so what's the even the point of rules um, if I can just break them all so this week we're also starting with sorcerer so what I see this character as is being um, maybe descended from dragons um, although we're not going with the um, with the draconic bloodline sorcerer so we're not we're not doing that but you you have had some kind of a uh, some kind of an encounter with dragons, um, and you've had these powers that you're trying to figure out how to control, and and it's just been really really tough, um, and you've got this this magic that just surges from you in ways that you don't know how to control, and this dragon is teaching you how to possibly control it through the power of music. So we're gonna start with sorcerer. Uh, this gives us a bonus to our concentration checks with proficiency in constitution saving throws this is going to be vital because we are going to be very interested in using concentration spells the entire time um yeah concentration is very very important on this character so having that is great i i don't want to have to take something like resilient um so we we went with this and we're gonna take the wild magic sorcerer i know wild magic is very divisive in the D&D community. Some people love it, some people absolutely hate it, uh, just because of the randomness that that comes from it, um, the unpredictability, uh, but that's what makes it fun. And so at your table, you may love this. At your table, you may hate this. I don't know. Talk to your talk to your DM um, and talk to the other players. Even this this is one that when I get to the ranking, this will be an interesting one that'll have a lot of discussion points. But we're going to skip over most of those today, just because we're only taking one level. But we get our wild magic surge here at level one, and this basically, uh, yeah, we have to roll on a big big D100 table. This is the only subclass that uses a D100. And random things can happen depending on if certain conditions are met, which is pretty awesome. Um, and we also have Tides of Chaos, which allows us to actually generate advantage for ourselves, which is also really, really cool. So there's a lot of really cool things here. Um, I really like the advantage. I really like, I personally like the rolling of the D100 for random things. Um, it's roughly an 80-20 split of good to bad. So most of the time, either something good is going to happen to you or something neutral. And then some of the time, you know, you'll turn into a potted plant. There, there are times when that will happen. Um, or you'll fireball yourself. Um, there, there are times when those things can happen. Um, but for me, those are what give memorable Dungeons & Dragons moments. So that's what I love about this subclass. Um, as far as our cantrips, we get four. Um, and I would suggest taking Firebolt. It's just a very... A very standard cantrip, a very reliable cantrip. Um, can't really go wrong with that. I would suggest Booming Blade here. Um, we we will have a sword with us, um, and so I would suggest taking this unless you wanted to take the hand crossbow, which is fine, um, in which case choose something different. But I like having Booming Blade here um, and being able to shove people away. So basically use Booming Blade uh, on them, then they move up to they they try to attack you right you blow them back a little bit and if they go to move they're gonna get hurt again so i really like booming blade for that uh 
for that aspect it really really works well with what we're trying to do as far as being able to shove people away when they attack us um, I really like that um, very much in the theme of what we're doing here um, mind sliver is a really really good cantrip to take um, gives a little bit of damage and a negative d4 to saving throws so we are already doing um, bardic inspiration negative to saving throws and plus this is an intelligence save I mean very few creatures are going to pass an intelligence saving throw so it's gonna be pretty reliable um, and, and I really like that and then as far as the last one you know you've got prestigitation you've got mage hand um, if you took telekinetic you'd get mage hand for free so something to keep in mind but prestigitation is always a good one just to have some some flavor it's good utility um, I really recommend that First level spells, um, pick your favorites, absorb elements, I would suggest here. Um, I'm actually not recommending shield just yet, because we can pick it up a little bit later. Um, but if you wanted to, feel free, it's it's right there. Um, I would take magic missile, very, very reliable one to take. Um, and then for other ones, I would do things that are based on saving throws. Um, we, we are going to be focusing very heavily on saving throw based attacks, cantrips, those sorts of things. Um, because we are able to throw out negative uh, negative modifiers to that. So Tasha's Caustic Brew, Ray of Sickness, Grease, things like that, all very reliable things that require a saving throw. At level two, we are beginning to understand how to use music or storytelling or whatever method your character chooses in order to control our magic a little bit better. And so we are going to go ahead and begin our bard levels here and we're gonna stay barred for a little while because I want to blitz to level six um, I want to go ahead and pick up our two of our subclass features so that we can have unfailing inspiration I don't want to put that off any longer it is a great feature so we're gonna run straight towards that as fast as we can so we get spellcasting for bards of course um, both are charisma casters so we don't have to worry about any kind of um, any kind of mix-ups as far as that goes everything is using the same stat which is great our bardic inspiration is a d6 currently and that will go up a little bit later um, the only cantrip I'm gonna say you like really need to take is vicious mockery for your bard cantrips um, otherwise just kind of pick your favorites basically uh, level one spells Bane um, I, the thing I really love Bane and all of these other negative spells in addition to what we have um, just because when you use this it doesn't necessarily just have to be for yourself you can use this to set up the wizard's fireball to set or set up something much stronger for the wizard maybe it's something that's a really really good spell but it requires a constitution saving throw as i'm sure you know a lot of creatures have really good con saves and so this could really really neuter those in a crucial time um, this can make sure that banishment spell uh, works later later on down the line um, it, it's very good to have these uh, these negatives going on so I would definitely suggest Bane um, and then I would suggest some control spells um, T Tasha's Hideous Laughter and Charm Person really really cool um, and so one thing that's cool is you could Bane turn one and then Mind Sliver turn two and Bane is keeps going as long as you maintain concentration and then mind sliver setting up whoever is after you um, and now they have a negative d4 to that save negative 2d4 to that saving throw which is pretty cool um, at least here at this level and then that will go down even more <laughs> as we go so really really cool what you can set up as far as combinations here Level three, we are at Bard two. We are going to get Jack of all trades here, as well as Song of Rest at a D6 and Magical Inspiration. So our Bardic Inspiration is a little bit more versatile now, of course, which is fantastic. Our, our Bardic Inspiration just does so much on this build. Um, it's so useful. So we're definitely also trying to get to where we get these back on a short rest because then we can blow them a little bit more freely and that is always a good thing um as far as our next level level four overall bard three we get expertise and we get our subclass and of course we're going with college of eloquence this gives us a couple of different features which we discussed in length last week so make sure to check that out up in the icard above if you missed it but we get silver tongue which basically makes it to where we're always going to be persuading or lying through our teeth successfully almost always um, one thing i would suggest now that you are taking 
uh, expertise at the same level, I would suggest that you go ahead and expertise out your persuasion and your deception. So that way you are uh, almost always succeeding. <laughs> it's it's really, really good. Um, it's really nice for social situations. You're definitely going to be the face of the party with this, and you're basically almost always going to succeed. And it's, it's absolutely fantastic. So make sure you grab proficiency and then expertise in those two skills. Pass that whatever you want to do. Um, we also get our unsettling words, which is one of our main reasons we're here in order to give negative modifiers to opposing, opposing uh, creature saving throws. I think that's fantastic. It's one of the best features that you that you get on this build and you get it so early. Um, th this is a subclass that's definitely a uh, very multi-class friendly subclass uh, because that feature right there is pretty great because then you can just throw out d6s uh, based on your uh, based on your charisma modifier so you, you have quite a few you know you can still throw those out as well as your bardic inspiration um, even if you just take three levels in this you know if you've got a if you've got another charisma caster and you're at a plus five charisma you still have five chances to use that so i mean that's still not that bad um, per, per long rest it's still not that bad um so we could, in now in theory, Bane on turn one. Turn two, we can Mind Sliver for our action and then bonus action, Unsettling Words. Uh, so now it's minus 2d6, minus 2d4 uh, to a saving throw, which is great. Um, we're only at level four and we're already causing all kinds of mayhem, which is fantastic. We also get second level Bard spells here and there are several that I would consider uh, this is going to be one of the few, very, very few builds that I recommend taking Cloud of Daggers. This the spell is is not the best spell in the world, but the ability to shove people through it with your feet is kind of uh, kind of compelling to me. Um, if you can trap them in a place where they attack you, you have it one space behind them. You shove them through it, and then they've got to run back through it to get to you if it's a melee character that's pretty great <laughs> um that that's pretty great obviously that takes some setup and that's not going to work every time especially if it's a wide open field or something that you're fighting in not going to work there but if you can set that up that's going to do a lot of damage um really really quickly so cloud of daggers is definitely one to consider besides that some standard ones um crown of madness pretty standard um enthrall would be a really good one and it's really really on flavor here um, just to get all the attention on you in order to help other people uh, get around safely on the battlefield um, or even in non-combat situations i like enthrall for non-combat situations actually a lot it's it's very versatile in in that way so um, really nice whole person mirror image just to save your butt and suggestion all all really really good standard spells at Bard 4, level 5, we're going to go ahead and take an ASI or a feat here, and uh, like I said, I really don't need any more feats. Um, I, obviously, some of them would be nice, but I'm going to just focus on ASIs this build, which may be a little boring, um, but I want to get my stats up, and I think that's important. So we're going to go ahead and start by go ahead and fixing those two odd numbers that we have, getting our constitution to 16 and our dexterity to 14. Uh, this is the highest that we really need our dexterity for this build, given what we're going to do. So I know that your weapon attacks are not really doing all that much damage at the moment, but hang on, we're going to fix it here in just a minute. Um, but I just, I got to do a couple things first. Um, next level at Bard 5, level 6 overall, we are getting our Bardic Inspiration bump to a D8. And of course, we get Font of Inspiration as well. So we're very happy campers getting that. Of course, if you are confused on what all of the Bard features do in detail, I, of course, have put up a Bard guide and ranking video. And that will be up in the iCard right there for you to check out. And that's where we go into detail on all of these Bard features that I'm kind of skimming over here because I've gone into detail before. So no reason to talk your head off twice. So then we get third level spells as well. Um, I'm only going to suggest a few here. Um, hypnotic pattern is kind of a must take in my opinion. Um, fear is a good one. And I think that that's also very on point with what we're doing and slow. I haven't suggested slow yet. I don't believe, but really good battlefield control. Um, just really good to shut down an enemy from doing more than what it normally would. 
this is especially not good on something with multi-attack um, or, or ways of doing a lot of things on its turn. Um, this can really, really help out with those. So really good for problematic enemies. At Bard 6, level 7 overall, we get Counter Charm. Who cares? Um, and then we get Unfailing Inspiration. This is what I was kind of rushing for because now if our Bardic Inspiration doesn't work out uh, and turn a failure to a success, it's not expended anymore, which is amazing. Um, this, this makes sure that you're not giving it out in vain. So let's say that uh, your, your friend makes an attack roll and misses the AC by two, right? Misses the AC by two. So they say, I'm gonna roll my Bardic Inspiration and roll a one. Normally, your Bardic Inspiration would just be expended and it's gone and oh well, sad times. But in this case, yes, you would still fail the roll, but you get to keep the Bardic Inspiration. That's fantastic. So that makes sure that you're getting the most mileage out of your Inspiration that you possibly can. No other subclass can do that. No other spell can do anything like that. Very unique, very powerful. So, level eight. We're gonna have a bit of a shift, um, just for a little bit. So your character now having become pretty good with instruments and um, somewhat controlling magic, depending on what's going on, now finds him or herself in a situation where a dark power has, uh, has begun to influence you. Where maybe you're experimenting with, uh, as Jareth would say, power of voodoo. voodoo. So we're gonna take a little dip in Warlock. We haven't done this yet on the channel, even though I kind of expected to do this on most of my charisma based builds. Um, we haven't done a one level dip into Warlock just yet, and I think most of you know exactly where this is going. <laughs> Um, it's going exactly where you think it's going. We're going to take one level of Hexblade Warlock. This is a really good subclass, and you get so much by just a one level dip that it, I, I, considered, I considered doing something a little different, which we will mention in our uh, honorable mentions at the very end, but I couldn't pass up this feature. I, I couldn't pass up Hexblade. Um, and this is why we don't have to go any higher than our dexterity. You are no longer going to be as sad when it comes to, well, sad as far as, you know, crying. We are going to be definitely more sad as far as single ability dependent, though, after taking a one level dip into Hexblade. So we get a couple of things here. We get Hexblade's Curse, which is really cool. Um, it allows us to mark targets. We can more easily crit them and... Um, it helps us do more damage and, and all of those things. There's a lot of really cool benefits here. Um, and we also get Hex Warrior, which is pretty great, giving us medium armor proficiency, shield proficiency, and martial weapon proficiency. So now you can switch up the weapons that you want to use, which is great. And you can now use Charisma instead of Dexterity for your attack rolls and damage rolls when using weapons that are specified as your specific weapon. That's fantastic. So we no longer really have to rely on our dexterity anymore, at least for attack rolls and saving throws and, and attack rolls specifically. Um, and we only need a plus two because medium armor, almost all of it is a max of plus two modifier from your dexterity, so we don't really need to waste any more of our ability score increases on dexterity when they're not gonna affect our AC at all. So we're definitely going to be shooting for as as good of uh, as, as good of uh, armor that you can get. Obviously, you'd wanna shoot for something like a breastplate at least, but obviously those are expensive, so probably a little early to have a breastplate, but who knows, maybe you've been saving your money. I mean, you are, you know, however many levels in, you, you know, you've, you've been here a while, so this is level 8. You can probably afford it by now, maybe, depending on what you've been hunting. So definitely work your way up to that. Um, take some kind of medium armor, though. Um, as soon as you possibly can, it will definitely make you much more happy. With that, we also get some cantrips here, and my suggestions to you are going to be Eldritch Blast, because Eldritch Blast, this gives you a really, really reliable option that scales as you level not in Warlock, but just in general. Um, so that's really, really handy in doing a lot of damage. And then I've got two suggestions for the other cantrip. In Toll the Dead, 
or Lightning Lure. Um, Lightning Lure I normally don't recommend, but I think it would actually work really nice on this. Or if you just want straight up damage, um, then you could definitely go with Toll the Dead. Whatever fits your uh, whatever fits your play style. One thing to keep in mind about Warlocks, since we haven't really talked about them on the channel, is that you have to keep the spell slots separate from Warlocks with your other spell slots. Your Sorcerer and Bard ones can mix, and that's totally fine, but Warlock spell slots are their own thing. You only get one, and that's as much as you're going to get, and it does regen on a short rest rather than a long rest with the others. So just keep that in mind. They are different, um, and so you can't count them in the same in the same pool. You can use them to cast spells from any of your spell lists that you know, um, at least that you spells that you do know. Um, but you know, just just be careful with with trying to do too much with it and that sort of thing. Um, it's it's really cool. Um, for first level spells, I have a few suggestions here. Um, first of all, you get the uh, ability to take shield with um, with being a Hexblade Warlock, so definitely something to consider. If you didn't take it earlier, you can take it now. Um, Armor of Agathus is good. Um, it's, it's not going to be super powerful, really. Um, you can upcast it with your other spell slots, though. I probably wouldn't cast it at first level at this point. I would, I would probably try to upcast it if I could. You'd get a lot more mileage that way. Um, Arms of Hadar isn't too bad. Um, and then Hellish Rebuke is also not bad at all. Um, that is a, a great way of just uh, lashing back out at somebody who's attacking you um, in in similar fashion to our feet um, so maybe you've run out of uses of your gift of the gem dragon and you want to use this it's there but uh, you you'd probably be better off taking the other ones um, then we head back to bard um, now that we have uh, had an experience with a dark power, power of voodoo. Oh, you do. Uh, it's it's time to get back to our roots here so bard seven level nine overall we are not getting any features, but we get fourth level spells, uh, fourth level bard spells. We of course are now uh, one level behind as far as what spell slots we're getting, um, but we have you know spells of a lower level, um, so you can have you can upcast these spells to the next level if you want to. Um, we do have the ability to take things like Charm Monster. Um, I definitely would consider that. Again, it's very on flavor. Um, Dimension Door, not so much on flavor, but I mean, helps you get around. Um, always a good spell. Greater Invisibility, and of course, Polymorph. Polymorph works really well here because you can now add negative modifiers to the save. So that's really fantastic. Um, Bard 8, level 10, we get the ability to take another ASI or feat. Like I said, we're taking ASIs basically the whole way. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get our constitution up to an 18 so that our concentration is not broken when we are casting things like Bane. Um, I, I really, really like Bane. I think it's a great concentration spell. Of course, there are many other options that I'm throwing out here as we go. This helps with all of them, so keep that in mind. Um, I did also consider taking Warcaster here, just to throw that out there. Um, you may want to take that for yourself. Um, Warcaster could be good to take at this level. Um, I'm gonna push it off, um, and I may, you know, I, I may take it, may end up taking Warcaster later, um, but I, I think that Warcaster now makes sense, or it could come later, but for now, I'm, I'm just gonna, for this build, we're gonna go to an 18 constitution. Next, Bard 9, we're gonna go to uh, Song of Rest, going up to a D8, and we also get 5th level Bard spells. Uh, I would say take Dominate Person, Hold Monster, and Modify Memory. Those are the big ones for me. Of course, I'm naming too many spells for you to take overall for the whole, uh, for your whole progression, but um, I just, I'm giving you what is out there, at least for me. Um, Bard 10, level 12, we are getting our Bardic Inspiration improved once again to a D10, and we get our very first round of Magical Secrets. Magical Secrets is what makes Bards so good, um, and so I love this. Let's for for our secrets spells, which is what I what I call them. Um, I think Banishment is great. Um, I, I think that that's a really really good spell to pick up. Of course, there's always Counter Spell. Um, there's always Haste. There's always Fireball. Um, these are these are three that I just wanted to throw out there because um, Counter Spell is always good to shut down enemy casters. Haste is good, not so much to cast on yourself. I would use this to cast on someone else 
but really good. And of course, Fireball, Dexterity Saving Throw. It's Fireball. Why not, right? Um, some of the other ones I would suggest here, um, Shadow Blade, I don't think would be a terrible option. This allows you to uh, make a basically spectral blade um, and you can use that to attack with, which is pretty cool. Um, there is a bit of contention in, in the community as far as creating the Shadow Blade and using it to cast Booming Blade. Technically, you can't do this. Rules as written. Some DMs would allow it, though, just because there is a material cost and you're making a blade that has no cost. Um, I believe uh, Jeremy Crawford said that he would allow it at his tables, but to me, rules as written, you can't do this. Ask your DM. It's possible. It's technically possible, but talk to your DM. Um, the other one I would take is Tasha's Mind Whip. Um, I, I think that this is a great spell to to throw in there if you want some uh, some some flavor some fun thrown in there bard 11 no features but we get six level spells there's only a couple here um, i would say mass suggestion and eye bite those are the only two i would really recommend here i mean there are others that are okay but eh, those are the only two i really like um, and then bard 12 level 14 i'm gonna cap our constitution um, I, I think that that's super super important to do um, so that we have the maximum amount of chance of maintaining our concentration which is great um, then bard 13 level 15 song of rest gets upgraded to a d10 and we get seventh level bard spells only a couple here um, but they're very potent force cage force cage is a must to me um, it is a fantastic spell um, just basically says you're gonna stay in there and you're gonna like it and you're not gonna leave and it's a saving throw to get out of the force cage if they try to uh, if, if they try to get out with teleportation and you of course can give them negative modifiers to that so fantastic stuff I, I think it's great prismatic spray would be the other one that I would suggest here also a really really good spell uh, bard 14 level 16 overall Magical Secrets, again, and Infectious Inspiration. Infectious Inspiration basically makes it to where you get way more usage out of each Bardic Inspiration that you use, allowing you to shift it around kind of like Hunter's Mark will let you do. It's amazing. <laughs> really, really good feature. Um, just makes this even more ridiculous. Um, as far as our Secrets spells here, uh, Finger of Death. Why not? <laughs> I mean, it's there. It's sitting right there. Um, Simulacrum. I'm going to definitely recommend that on every bard. I'm going to recommend it on every single possible caster. Um, yeah, Simulacrum's insane. Um, and then Power Word Pain. I normally don't recommend Power Word Pain, but I think here it's actually pretty cool. Um, it, it does require a saving throw, but it does a good amount of damage. And I really I like it in this situation where you can add a negative modifier to that saving throw. Then for Bard 15, level 17 overall, our Bardic Inspiration is finally a D12. So you're now doing the most amount of help to your allies and the most amount of damage as far as saving throws and attack rolls and things um, to your opponents, which is great. You also get 8th level Bard spells, and there are a few here that I would take. Um, Dominate Monster, always good. Um, Feeble Mind, this, this is where we're getting into just the ones that are insane. Mind Blank always good and then power word stun the power word spells um, outside of kill and heal I normally don't really recommend all that much just because the saving throw is a little tough but here we are working very much against those saving throws and so I think I'm okay with uh, I think I'm okay with taking it bard 16 level 18 overall I think I'll finally take Warcaster here. Of course, you could have taken it earlier um, to get advantage, but I, I think it's okay to take. Um, you could also bump your dexterity to a 16, which is what I had in my original notes. Um, but uh, I don't know. It's going to give you plus, it's not going to give you any bonus to your AC. It will help you with your initiative, and that's about it because of the Hexblade features. So. I probably wouldn't even do that. I probably would just take, uh, probably would take Warcaster here, or if you took it earlier, cap out Constitution, that sort of thing. Uh, level 17, level 19 overall, Song of Rest goes to a D12, which is great. And then we get our ninth level spells. So yes, it's it's a little late. We're getting those at, at 19th rather than 17th level, but it's okay. It's worth the wait because we are much more sad in a good way than we would have been before. Um, mass Polymorph, 
very good. Power Word Kill. Prismatic Wall, I think, is a must bring. And then Polymorph. I want to, uh, true Polymorph, rather. I want to talk about Prismatic Wall for a second. Prismatic Wall is the spell that I really want you to take here because you can set the wall behind them, shove them through it when they go to attack you, and it does so much damage. Um, Prismatic Wall is insane. And then they've got to run back through it in order to get you, which does a lot more damage. So, yeah, the ability to shove with your feet, you're going to get a lot of usage out of, and I think that you will really, really enjoy the cohesion in all of this. Finally, level 20, Bard 18, we got our final magical secrets, and they are ninth level spells. Of course, Wish. Duh. But you have to take Wish. Um, as far as the other ones, I'm going to suggest some weird ones. Um, Meteor Swarm, I think, would be a really cool uh, cool one to take for some big damage. Um, and Sunburst as well. I think Sunburst is a really, really cool spell to take on this build as well. So that is our build for the day. I hope you guys liked it and let me know in the comments down below what you think. Before we go, I wanted to go ahead and do our honorable mentions on what almost was and um, what very, it was very close to happen and then I ended up scrapping it and, and starting over. Um, as far as the Sorcerer, um, I, I basically always had the plan to start Sorcerer. However, it was originally Clockwork Soul. I just did a Clockwork Soul Sorcerer, um, so I don't, really want to do that again i want to make sure that i'm mixing all of these up and doing a bunch of different things so we ended up going with the wild magic sorcerer but the clockwork soul is definitely very strong on this subclass because if something has advantage on its saving throw that you're adding these negative modifiers to that's going to hurt your modifiers but if you can then nullify that with your restore balance feature that's kind of great and so definitely uh, definitely consider that one i also considered aberrant mind more for flavor than anything else and i probably wouldn't have taken uh gift of the gem dragon at that point but aberrant mind um, is is also really really good as a sorcerer uh, as far as warlock uh it actually wasn't originally a hexblade um it actually was originally an archfey warlock and I, it, it fits the theming really really well Within 10 feet, you can charm or frighten. It fits, and so I, as far as as far as flavor, I think Archfey might have been a little bit better. But as far as mechanically speaking, Hexblade is going to be superior. So use use that if you think that it's it's better for your flavor. I think Archfey does a lot more for you as far as fitting your flavor. Then, as far as feats go, um, our, our honorable mentions, um, Telekinetic, which I mentioned already. Um, I, I think that Telekinetic would have been really, really nice to have. It would have given us Mage Hand for free, and also the ability to move people around. However, it did compete with our bonus action that we are using for our main feature of giving out Bardic Inspiration and also giving out negative Bardic Inspiration. It takes that up, and so I didn't want that competition there. Didn't seem to be good. Um, of course, we t ended up taking Warcaster, um, but if you didn't take it, I would consider taking it. And finally, I would say Tough. Um, tough is a really, really good one here. Um, gives you a lot more survivability, which is always great. And um, I think you would have gotten a lot of mileage out of that feat as well. So that is all for today's video, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Next week, we're gonna be talking about the Glamour Bard, and I hope you guys are excited about seeing how to dress the part and be the ultimate bard up in people's faces, being the prettiest that you can possibly be. It's fantastic. So until then, stay safe out there. Have a great time with shopping and, and receiving all of the gifts in the mail and, and that sort of thing. And we will see you next week. Bye-bye.